I have got a meet the owner today on a boat which I must admit I have a bit of a vested interest in because this is very much on my list of maybe one day I would love to have one of these. So this is Phil and Michelle. Hi Phil and Michelle. Hello. Hi, Nick. <laughs> and they've got this beautiful Fairline Targa 47 GT, I think I'm right in saying. That's it. Yep. And that's the hardtop version, isn't it? It is, yeah. And I've got to say, it looks absolutely stunning. It looks, I mean, what, what year is this? It's 2009. 2009. Yeah. So that's, uh, what, 13 years old, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. That's amazing. Let me come back here so people can see the whole boat. I'm not saying this should be kind, but that does look like new. That looks really, really good. So um, I think what we're going to do, if we may, is if you can give us a look around the boat, show us it and show us um, you know, everything about it, and then maybe we can have a sit down and have a chat about your boating history and sure. talk about the boat. Yeah. Sounds good. Brilliant. Okay. I'll follow you on. I have to say one of the first things I like is that these are quite low. When you stand next to them, they're down here. They're not sort of up here, aren't they? That's right. Still very much a sports boat. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Heart, yeah. <laughs> and there's a tender gouge on this one, I think I'm right in saying? So, yeah, we've got a tender. And this is one of the main reasons why we, why we went for this boat, is that you've got the, the tender garage on here, which you can actually fit. It's designed for a, a 285 Williams. Uh, OK. Um, but because we both uh, enjoy water skiing, we actually have got a 325 in there. Right. It's slightly bigger and we just have to soften the tubes a little bit to get it in there but it, it does fit it's often a question that gets asked on the forums is what's the biggest tender you can get in and <laughs> you can actually get a 325 in a target wow. 47 that's so, a nice size tender actually so it isn't is it? it's a nice yeah it's yeah. a really nice bit of kit in there and you can ski off it so said. we can mono ski behind it really? with the extra wow. extra water line length it's just that little bit bigger and the kids kids play with it as well with uh, with the uh, the ringos and they're learning to water ski as well now so yeah it uh, got set up for, for water sports as well which is, is pretty handy perfect cool okay let's head on a little further if we may <laughs> now i can't help noticing this upholstery which i'm gonna say with some with some authority is not original <laughs> <No>. <laughs> that's definitely, definitely the not. first piece of yeah. sea tag you've seen on the boat ah, of course because you had this one sea tagged haven't you so this yes. was this was sea tagged uh, earlier in the year uh -huh. so this is um this is the result of about six weeks worth of uh, of work down in plymouth so we we obviously have had the boat now since 2013 and it was pretty well original uh, up until this year and we'd we'd done the whole process of looking around and uh, working out whether we were going to change the boat or or keep her and just update her spend yep. a bit of money and um we we both really like the boat it's a really good well-built solid boat yes uh, it's got a good good balance of cockpit space versus uh you know cabin space so we thought well let's let's spend a bit of money and, and update her so okay. that's what we've done so you're starting to see now some of the the changes certainly in the cockpit yep um we've we've done all the the electronics and the electronic side of things but in the cockpit we we needed to reupholster so we've changed the upholstery and work very much with sea tag on the look and feel and design of it design, yeah. fantastic yeah, which Looks fantastic which we think you know is just gives it a bit of a facelift it, it's a bit interesting it's, it's obviously unique to us which is quite handy and, and uh, is, is, is nice it's interesting because you could just simply replace the upholstery hmm. you could have just replaced it with a plain yeah, yeah. Uh, what it had before yeah yeah but i think you know this just looks a bit lifted it, doesn't it makes it the boat is, yeah. look a lot more modern thing looks a yeah. lot classy a lot modern yeah and we've seen a lot haven't we that have, that have been reupholstered and we did yeah. a bit of research and looked around at other other 47s and similar age fair lines and they've gone for you know the more modern silver tech fabric for the upholstery um, but I think having the sea tag approach in terms of you know using Sarah and the design team there we've actually been able to create something that's just a little bit more interesting with a bit more design and flair into it it just gives it a bit more of a premium feel I think throughout the boat for sure so um, so yeah we've been really pleased really pleased with it excellent um, excellent let's press on a little bit further so this is obviously got the hard top but it's the open backed hard top so this is very much a cockpit area you don't come to like a deck saloon do you yeah so with the, with the 47 it was always designed this way as a gt with with the hard top on there um which again we think works really well um, uh, in in the uk because you can have it all closed up with the canopies and we've got heating obviously out here so you can use it all year round 
But as you can see today, with the, with the, uh, the covers off and opening the, the hardtop um, roof as well, you can create a really good open boat feel with it. It's you? a great social boat. You can get lots of people on board if you want to go and do water sports. You don't get any of the water and mess downstairs. It's a great area and you can just hose it straight out at the end of the day. Yeah, of course. Well, that makes sense. Mm. And that table, made, has that had a bit of refurbishment? That looks good. Yeah, yes. so <laughs> as you're walking through now, you're starting to see more of the, the sea tag changes. So they did all of the teak for us on the uh, on the cup holders the table was refurbished and the teak on the barbecue area was all refurbished um, we've we've changed we did the the teak outside uh, with flexi teak two years ago I think it was wasn't it mm -hmm. um, and then the inside teak has actually stayed in pretty good condition so we just uh, you know clean it and semco seal it every year um, and maybe one day we might change and do the, the flexi teak in, in here as well. But as I say, at the moment, it's natural and it, it's in good nick and, and works quite well, doesn't it? Indeed. Fantastic. Let's have a look at the helm, if we may, because that looks like it might have had a few changes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So the, the whole helm area, we having had the boat and used it and put probably five or six hundred hours on it. Um, we, we decided to make a few changes, uh, one to the dash and the configuration of the dash slightly in the screen space, um, but most importantly the seating. So before the seating would have been just a standard kind of a bench, um, which was okay, but actually the one of the design faults that we found with the 47 is that that seating is actually quite low. Um, which is fine if you're just playing around the Solent, but certainly doing any kind of length and, and passages. Um, I ended up having to put cushions under me to get me up so I could sit in the seat nice and high, but yeah. still have the visibility around. Yeah. So we decided to go for the twin helms with the, the bolsters on there, which is, is quite standard now on a lot of these sort of sports boats, which is a lot more comfortable. But the key thing that SeaTag have done for us now is they've put an electronic raise into it. Oh, wow. So that actually lifts up and you can set the height on that exactly for where you are with the boat trim and depending on what speed you're doing. That's brilliant. Uh, which it is really nice. Enjoy, might I say. <laughs> yeah, that's such a good yeah, idea. Yeah, something that, again, has made such a difference to, to actually helming the boat now. Yeah. Uh, being able to set the height and, and be in a nice comfortable seat and a nice comfortable height, yeah. depending on the boat trim. Um, has, has made a real difference to it, hasn't it? Yeah. And I don't need it's to stick stick cushions on the backside yeah. anymore, which is, is good. Very comfortable the seats now as well. Yeah, yeah, it is. Awesome. So yeah, so we reconfigured the dash very slightly. So um, one of the things that we we did was have the dash completely refurbished and resprayed. Well, we say we did actually. That was a secondary. It was. Yeah. Because when we actually <laughs> came back to look at the boat after it'd been done, it was really noticeable that just where you come in the gangway here, it had lots of little scratches. And so we actually see had then had to go back to get everything back out and they've resprayed the whole of the dash in a much nicer smoother finish the other um, finish was slightly rough and so it would catch a little bit of fabric would catch in there it's and stuff, so quite dirty it? all the time whereas this yeah. is a nice new smooth finish so again it just lifts the boat makes it look new again this is I think the danger sometimes isn't it is you do one area it looks so good but it yeah. highlights yeah. Yeah. everything else doesn't well, it it was yes. we, we really noticed it when we came in because we'd had the panels all changed and the yeah. dash reconfigured because as I say these these have actually been moved across slightly right. to allow us to get the 16 inch uh, Axiom XL in there um, which gives us that much bigger screen size, which is nice. It's normally standard with a 12-inch uh, plotter on here. So to get the 16 in uh, just creates that, that better yeah. visual bigger, kind of much bigger display. Screen space. Yeah. So yeah, so once we'd done that, then we were looking and thinking, oh, actually, if we didn't spray the dash as well, it would make it look a little bit nicer and just lift it. And it's detail, put, isn't it? And yeah. It makes all the difference and, and it just makes, it does make it look a lot more modern. Mm. Definitely, yeah. And we, we changed, uh, we've changed all the head units. We've changed the radio on here. We basically um, had a blue suite of Rainwood Electronics. That's right. Put the, the radar, remote on, didn't we? Right through down to the RMK10 new radio, new XLs and new instruments. Fantastic. So I'll have a head down inside then, if we may. Yeah. Thank you very much. Now I have to say, this is what I like about these, is I think this is a really, really good balance. Yeah. Because although it's a sports cruiser, this feels really big in here, doesn't it? Yeah, and really right. nicely done. And you've got two big cabins. So for two couples or for a family, it's perfect. 
and um, and a decent sized heads as well. Is it just the one heads or the two? I can't remember. Twin, twin, twin heads. heads. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. so. Got on it's got everything, then, hasn't it? Half cabin. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one of the things we really liked, wasn't it? Was that that balance between the, the cockpit space, the sociable space upstairs, but also still in the winter months or of an evening where you want to be down. Uh, you know, down in the uh, in the boat itself, it's still quite a nice space. It's a usable space. There's enough space for us um, as a family of four to sit down and have friends over and sit down and have a drink of an evening. Yeah. And the other thing to note as well, the table lowers as well, so we can actually have six people sitting ah, on really comfortably. Brilliant. Have you done that? We do. Yeah. Yes. We yeah. often have a couple of friends staying over. I think our record's about eight on. Because <laughs> 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 they sleep on the sun pad as well. We've had yeah. wow. people everywhere yeah. we, on it. So. It's a great balance, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you who loves these, actually, seriously. Um, James Bark, yes. who I'm sure you yes. know. <laughs> he's, only, he's a YouTube star now, of course, right, as we yeah, all know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he was a Fallon dealer for many years, and he raves about these. He's yeah. always going about uh, Tiger 47. Well, he was one of the one of the reasons, probably, why we did get into one of these, because we, we bought, we'll come on to it later, but we did buy a, a Phantom 40 through James, and then a, for, a Tiger 44. Right. Um, and this was always the boat that we wanted, just because of the being on shafts, yeah. performance, uh, being a good sea keeping boat and having the tender space garage and, and space and layout. So it ticked all of the boxes for us back in sort of 2010 when we were looking for one yeah. and ended up getting one in 2013. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. It, you know. And here so we are took, a decade later. It took a lot of beating and we still think, you know, it's it's not um, an ultra modern boat now with you know the configurations with the guest cabins, but you know, it, it's, um, it's a boat that still works well. Um, build quality is is still really really good with these, um, and you know the sea keeping is is very really good as well because we do use it. We go across the channel quite often and down to the west country. So having that good sea keeping ability is is quite important as well to us. Totally. Let's have a little look around if we may. So we've got the mm -hmm. owner's cabin in the bow on this one. I think I'm right in saying. Yes, come on. Yeah. Through. And am I right in saying as well? There's been a little bit of sea tagging going on in here because this <laughs> looks to me. <laughs> Well, it has to be seat tagged <laughs> okay. probably, so Fair let's enough. start. Talk me through. Headlinings, yep. window linings, right. all of the upholstery around the bed heads and the bed ends, carpets and the bulkhead lining as well. Wow. So, and and mm. my, my favourite piece, the headboard. That looks really good actually. Yeah, and yeah. it really makes it bespoke to us. Yes. It makes a feature there yeah. as well, because so it, was, it was all wood before round, um, which was the original kind of uh, design. Um, but again, Sarah sort of said, well, you know, if we do this to it and make a bit more of a feature out of it, it will, you know, it will look good and draw your attention to it. So it's a bit of a centrepiece, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. you really see it when you come yeah. down into the boat. It's the yeah. first thing you see. Yeah, that's brilliant. And an ensuite in here? Yeah. Yep. Stick the camera in so we can have a look. ensuite. Okay. It's not, not the, the biggest, and I guess that's probably where you've got a bit of a compromise for the space that you've got in the saloon. Mm. But uh, given the amount of time that you really don't spend in there over the course of a weekend or a week. It's, well, it's it. perfectly adequate for showering and brushing your teeth. But it's lasted. I mean, that's had no, essentials. apart from a bit of mastic, that's had no refurbishment at all. That is, is when we bought the boat. Yeah, and it still looks good, doesn't it? It looks mm. great. Yeah. Really pleased with it, yeah. Yeah, fabulous. Okay, let's wind back a bit further because I'm going to say there's New a bit more in here. TV <laughs> unit. Yeah. So this was a, another centrepiece of the boat that we designed with Sea Tag to try and say, I don't even remember the old one. It had some gold trims around the outside and very black glass all around here. Ah, yes. So yeah, we wanted we wanted a a newer modern TV, a smart TV, and with two young kids as well, it's great to be able to have the sat TV and a smart TV as well. So you could actually watch Aquaholic on there. We can. We can. Oh, yes, we, we can plug you in in a minute and have a watch. And this is a, another little. Seat. And it's now connected because we've just bought the uh, the Raymarine uh, router. Right. So router? for the first time, we've actually got 4G on board as well. So we're pretty self sufficient. Yeah. yeah. Uh, internet connection which That's is good fantastic. Now. You can see yeah. that SeaTag have built all of this oh, wow. to house all of the different bits of equipment, radio, sat TV, Sky TV, even a little edge to hold your remote controls. Yeah, it's details like that make all the difference, isn't it? It makes a massive yeah. difference to put them out of the way and know they're safe when you're going exactly. along and you don't lose them. Exactly. And how many times do you think, we'll put a tally on, what, who had the remote control last? <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, totally agree. I think that's great. So the whole well, we mentioned the panel there has been done. Headlinings? Every, even here again, all the headlinings, all of the window linings. The main piece you'll see that's different is the sofa. So if, um, remember the old sofas had these sort of leatherette type fabric and they had the sort of traditional bulge seats in them. Uh, so yes. SeaTac have completely refoamed these, redesigned them and put more of a sort of modern hard wearing fabric on them. 
Brilliant. Makes it a bit warmer and cosy, especially if you use a boat a lot in the winter. Yeah. It's nice for it to come down and not have to have the coldness that you would get from the leather. Yeah, totally, totally. And actually, I always find with boat settees, they can be very upright. Mm. Yes. Uh, and I think, you know, they sometimes design these things for boat shows and they want to push the settee as far back as possible to get as much floor space as possible, but they're not always comfortable to sit in. Mm. Um, and so to redesign areas like that, I think, more for use than for looking at, makes a lot of sense, doesn't yeah. it? Definitely, yeah. No, it is. It's, it makes it quite a cosy space down here now. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, you know, we've, we've actually been down here more probably since the refit yeah. than we did before yeah. and yeah. used it. But, you know, really the only original things are the, the GRP and the wood. Yes. Uh, all of the other fabrics and furnishings have all changed, even round with the, the galley. Yeah. Uh, we've actually changed the appliances in the in the galley as well. So yeah, we have a new hob. Mm -hmm. I'd accidentally chipped the previous one. <laughs> um, but we do. We've got two kids we have on board, and we uh, host quite a bit on board as well. So I wanted a much bigger oven. So it's the same space. Right. Whereas you traditionally have the small round table microwave oven combi. Oh yes, this of course. It's now got still a microwave oven combi, but you've got two shelves. For cooking and pretty much four times the space to better put things in. Brilliant. And do you cook on board a lot? Oh, we do actually. Yeah, we yeah. do a lot of. We've got the barbecue up the top as well, so we'll do barbecues as well. But it's great. You can cook a, a decent meal down here as well. Fantastic. Excellent. And if we head on back a little bit further, there's a big fridge on these, isn't there? So, well, we'll yeah. take, talk about this. So this okay. is sorry, this is a great fridge freezer, and this is the original fridge freezer. This is the only thing that we're still waiting for SeaTag to finish, but we will put a new fridge freeze in when we can find mm. one that's the right. We're actually waiting for a, a manufacturer yeah. to come up with a replacement <laughs> size at the moment, it, so it's not SeaTag's fault. No, it's the, it's the size of that. Yeah. I mean, it's a great freezer. It's got two shelves in it. It's yeah. Yeah. There, but yeah, it's for a great. family of four cruising for a, a week or two, it's it's, it's really good and surprising yeah. how quickly that gets filled up and, and used. Brilliant. So we need the manufacturer to come up well. Exactly. We need yeah. To, to, to do a, a right fridge freezer again. Excellent. Replacement, <laughs> replacement size. Yeah. Are you listening, Mila? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay. And then back here. The aft cabin, or what we call it, our girls' cabin. Yeah. Again, it's great because it's full height. It is. That's really yeah. cool, isn't and it? Yeah. You step down here into the middle, and it's still full height. I love these boats. I'm not yeah. saying that because I'm being kind. I just genuinely do. It's I think they're the fantastic. One of the reasons we, we'll come later, we, we wanted to keep this boat. I mean, yeah. it's very difficult to find a boat that ticked all the boxes as well as this boat did. Yeah. Well, the thing is, we're around 48 feet now. They're all getting these full beam master cabins in, which are lovely. They are lovely. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, they are nice, <laughs> but. You know, you end up with a very high, wide boat in order to get yes. them in. You know, the, the cockpits, as well, we saw on the outside of the boat, so you walk past it, it's quite a low, sleek looking boat. Yeah. And there is always a compromise. You're not going to get more space without finding it on the outside of the boat. Length and, and height, as you say. Yeah. And this, I think, gives you that, that really original, sort of low profile, sleek looking boat, but still gives you, I mean, this is a lovely area. It's great. Again, SeaTag have been out there, their good work again. So, again, nice feature board, headboard, all the headlinings, all of the bulkheads and again this room there's a lot of bulkhead to be replaced this was quite a cold room in the winter right whereas now it's a lovely soft fabric touch feel would well, that have been wood before no this was all of the sort of um traditional oh, vinyl leather, vinyl, it? Leather. yeah, yeah. And it, was, it was it was practical but yep. it wasn't cozy and warm especially in, in sort of the winter yeah yeah no i get that completely and yeah. then over here we've got a nice double cupboard and some drawers oh nice yeah that's very good and then which is great on this boat, another heads and a separate shower. Yeah. So if you have guests on board or children on board, they've got their own space. Perfect. Perfect. It's the perfect male, isn't it? It's got everything, yes. but not too much. Not too much. <laughs> yes. Because it is tempting, isn't it? You think, well, we get another bit bigger this and a bit bigger that, and suddenly you're in a 60 foot boat and you can't berth it anywhere. Well, and and that, that was, one of, the, that was <laughs> one of the considerations again, wasn't it? Was, was the running costs, the upkeep. Um, but actually the destinations, and I mean, you know, it's been the same everywhere, but certainly around the Solent, berthing for weekends and overnights has just been a premium. And the bigger you go, the harder it is. And I think, you know, even with this boat, we've, we've found and noticed a change, haven't we, in the last sort of four or five years now. But I think you go any bigger and you step into that sort of 50, 55 foot bracket, it then becomes even harder. And generally we, we're still at that size where we can just about sneak in. If they've got space, they'll try and accommodate you. Yeah. So it, it, uh, it, it does make the, the whole yeah. berthing thing a bit easier, doesn't it, for us? Brilliant. Okay, so I think what we'll do now, if we may, is have a chat about your boating history. I was yeah. going to suggest we do it in the cockpit, but yeah. actually it's a lot quieter down here because there's a lot of chat. Because mm. <laughs> we're at a boat show at the moment, yeah. so so could we do it here? Would that be all right? Yeah, yes. it's fine. Excellent. If I park you two guys over there and I sit over here, that might work quite well. You see, this is typical Fairline. Lots of um, 
lots of manufacturers put folding tables, but they don't normally put little rubber inserts so that they don't rattle when they're closed. And little okay. handles to be able to lift them up and down. Yeah, let's yeah. show the little handles. Where are we going? Oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just get your fingers yep. under it, to lift it up. Brilliant. Cool. I'm going to hold that just there. That's okay. That looks good. And uh, okay, let's start at the beginning. How did you get into boating and what was your first boat? Uh, right. For me, it was, uh, I started probably as early as I can remember um, with uh, parents boating. Right. And uh, yeah, it was brought up, probably learned to water ski before I could ride a bike and, and swim before I could walk. Um, and we had sort of family boats right the way through, but I think for, for the two of us, when we sort of met and got together and started boating together as a couple, um, we had a rib at the time, didn't we? Was yeah, so we, so I started in toppers when I was about eight or nine. Brilliant. And then yeah. we probably met late teens. That's right, so we, met through, we met through sailing. sailing. So wow. we're, both, we're both sailors yeah. at heart. Okay, so both things have got a lot to answer for. And, yes. sail. and my yeah. dad had a boat and yacht, so we used to do all our family holidays yachting around the Solent and down to Weymouth and the West Country. Fantastic. So we've always grown up yeah. with boats and then as we've gotten older, you still sail a lot, but I've, since we've had the kids and got a bit older, we've sort of moved more into the motor boating. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. you can't be good convenience, can you? You can't, yeah. getting somewhere quickly with yeah. small children and yeah. being able to then enjoy when you're there. Yeah. Yeah. So you had a rib first of all? So we had a rib when we first met, didn't we? Only a four and a half metre. We yeah. used to tow that around and uh, you know do a bit of boating in that. And then uh, then we bought... Well, you taught uh, me to water ski on the rib. That's right, yeah. <laughs> then we bought uh, a Sea Ray 215. Oh, I know. They were a nice boat, a weren't they? brilliant boat. Yeah. Really good. Single engine, five litre petrol. Very high super. sides. Quite a sort of a big, chunky boat for a 21 footer, aren't they? That's right, yeah. yeah. Um, and that was the first boat that we'd kept in, in a marina and actually had it marina berthed. Mm. Um, um, so that sort of brought us into a different type of boating yeah um, and then we changed that for a 240 a Sundance a Sea Ray 240 so now you've got standing headroom so and a separate little, cab, a little bed right. under the back and I'd come and yeah. stay away yeah <laughs> <laughs> and a toilet a proper toilet yeah that was my That's minimum right. requirement yeah uh, uh, mine too <laughs> yeah. so it's nice so you could have four we did four, four people two, two couples on board and we did you? Sort of four or five nice. nights away on that didn't we little yeah. holidays around the yeah, Solent and Pool let's go down to Pool didn't yeah. we with mm -hmm. that which was, was good yeah um, and then when we sold that, we then moved into uh, a Fairline Phantom 40. So that didn't was we? our first sort of foray into, well, I'd say the big, mm. sort of, you know, bigger boats. Yeah. So this was still before children. This was before children. Yeah. yeah. And we yeah. used to live up in Petersfield and we used it, we kept it here at Swanwick and we used to use it as a sort of country cottage. So yeah. every weekend, winter, summer, we'd come down, either take it out or just <coughs> use it. In the marina. Perfect. Yeah, and that's getting into what I would call the big league twin diesel engines. Exactly. Yeah. That was a different, you know. yeah, different sort of uh, change. Step well, change, wasn't it? In boating because yeah. we then started going down to the west country. So we'd never been as as far as some. We went to Foy and Dartmouth and Songs. That's our first trip in a boat. And then mm. we did a cruising company across to. France we we did two Guernsey. two of the uh, MBM cruises yep. with Neil and Claire. I know, yeah. And that sort of got us into doing cross channel because that yes. was the sort that of first, first time that we did yeah. cross channels. That gave us the confidence to do that. It's a good way to get into it, isn't it? Yeah, it's definitely. Two thousand and nine. Yeah. That was our first channel. That was the crossing. first first one, wasn't yeah. it? We did, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so we had the Phantom Forty, which we bought from from James at uh, uh, Essex. Mm -hmm. um, we had that for until two thousand and ten. Was it 2010? I think it's 2010. Yes, yes, it yeah. Been, yeah, we bought, we were meant to go where? Well, then I was pregnant. <laughs> we went to downsize. Right. <laughs> we went to see the barks, didn't we? Yeah. And ended up with a 44 foot boat. <laughs> yeah. So our downsizing didn't really work that well. We ended up, we, we lost the flybridge. Yeah, lost we lost the flybridge. Fly yeah. yeah. actually had a slightly bigger yeah. boat, didn't we? We but needed so. to get rid of the flybridge when we thought we were having children, young children. I didn't think a flybridge would be that great with small children so that makes sense. yeah mm. so we did then get a bigger boat yeah. yeah and again we did a few couple of cruises with that didn't we and yeah. we met some some friends on a previous cruise um who also had young children similar sort of age so we were starting to do quite a bit more uh cruising company with with them which mm -hmm. which was nice but this was always the boat that we were hankering after um yeah, yeah it was always the one that kind of yeah was sort ticked, of the, all the boxes. ticked all the boxes for us yeah so we had the the 44 i think for a couple of years and then this boat that we're on now actually came up for sale it was already in the marina and we knew the owners of it um we were quite friendly with them and it came up on the market and we said right we'll, buy that. we'll have that yeah. <laughs> so um yeah we, we took this one in 2013 september of 2013 um and then we've had it 
uh, since yeah, yeah since well, then really haven't we? Le and uh, nine years. Nine nine years. And I'm guessing what this gives you then is shaft drive. Yeah. Is the forty four doing on out drives? I would guess. Forty four is on IPS. Oh yeah. So okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Fair enough. So you've got the shaft drive, and uh, what size engines have you got in this? So this has got the D nine five hundreds. Right. Um, which I think is is actually the smaller. There's two engine options on this. They had the D nine five seven fives or the five hundreds. Yeah. Um, but as I say, we we get 30, 31, 32 knots out of this. Yeah. I think the five seven fives gave you an extra knot or two on yeah. the book speed, but yeah. I don't know whether you'd notice that difference. No. Um, but and the, the physical engine, I think, is the same size. It's, it's just tuned differently, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, yeah that's right. I think they they're mapped slightly differently, yeah. so it gives you a little bit more power. But certainly, we've never noticed this, you know, being sluggish. And no. uh, we load it up, as I say, with a Williams in the back, and you know. Mm. Water. water. Whenever yeah. we go anywhere, <laughs> having water. bottles of water. I mean, yeah, yeah. Probably got another dinghy in the way of water we carry around. With us. I know exactly what you mean. We're saying nothing worse than running out. Is exactly. There? Yeah. 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 Totally. And so, where have you been with this boat? Well, this boat's allowed us to do lots more. So we've done Brittany Coast. So we've done St. Car. We've done um, Binnick, Pampano, yeah. all across that coast. We've done many times. Guernsey and Jersey. Jersey and Guernsey's a favourite, yeah. And then we did, just before Covid 2019, we went across to the Normandy. So we did Savar, um, on Fleur, Deauville, and we also took the boat up uh, the Oystrom Canal, Canal into Cannes. Ah, uh, okay. And that was fabulous. Yeah. yeah, wow. Under the Pegasus Bridge. Yeah, and, yeah. that was That's brilliant. A, yeah, that was good, so good yes, fun, wasn't it? So we generally do our two week family holiday on here every year. Yeah. And Covid times we've been a little more closer to home. So main day West Country, Salkham, Dartmouth. Yeah. Um, but prior to that, we'd always hop across either to Channel Islands or somewhere in France. Wow, that's fantastic. And they are very capable boat, aren't they? I mean, oh, yeah. they? That's the thing. I think the shaft drive puts the engines a bit further forward and they're a bit sort of lower revving and a bit more kind of meaty, aren't they, I yeah. guess. And and and, um, and certainly they have a very good reputation for seakeeping. Mm. They're really, I mean, they're very seaworthy. We've never had a problem um, going across a channel in this boat. And, you know, we've come back in some fairly... Yeah, we try and try and pick and choose yeah. our conditions with, with the kids, back, but, but yeah, yeah, sometimes you you get yeah. caught out, or you know, it's not quite as smooth as you think it's going to be with the tides. It's, it's only downsize. Is it's slightly noisy in the cockpit because where the engines are right underneath of you. It is quite. That's about the only downside. Yeah. I would yeah. say. Yeah, there was is, two, is the two, two, uh, three design faults with the boat that we found in that time. <laughs> one, one is one Your of the seat. windows oh. in the cabin at the back. If you've got it open and you fill the water tank and you forget to turn it off. The water drips and runs down straight into the cabin. <laughs> oh, no. So you learn that lesson very yeah, quickly yeah, once uh, yeah, yeah. And, and leave that window shut. Let me guess how you learned that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, the second is the helm seat, which we've addressed. Yep. So now having the, the rising helm seat. Yep. And the third's going to be more difficult because it is it's kind of a, a design, I guess, with this type of boat where you've got the engines right under that closed roof. Absolutely, um, and so the fiberglass of the roof kind of gives it, it reflexive, it reverberates it? around. Yeah. So it is a it is quite a noisy boat, which I know a lot of people have, have mentioned. But yeah. we get used to it, and uh, as I say, it's a short period of, of time, day, but you know, three four hours to cross the channel, it? and then you're done, aren't you? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I have to say as well, it it, it is it's not the boat it's the style of boat because i know for a fact that the princess v48 which is ex almost identical compared to this exactly mm. the same mm. yeah, brilliant boat lovely sea boat fabulous accommodation a little bit noisy yeah, yeah. you know but they're all a compromise yeah. every single boat it is yeah exactly. we'll always <laughs> find something and and i always say this you know sometimes uh, people will say things like oh that boat should have a bit of bigger toilet or something and you say great okay where would you like to lose the space mm. you know because you can't just have a bigger toilet. You can have to say, okay, a bigger toilet or a smaller saloon or a smaller bedroom or a smaller this. Mm. They're all a compromise. And I think that's, you know, if you're going to go with the shafts and you're going to go with the sports cruiser layout, inevitably you're above the engines, it's going to be noisier. Mm. You know, you can mm. say, okay, we'll have a flybridge, we'll put us further away. But then you're up on top, as you say, you've got kids, you're worried about that. I never liked the flybridge. You're quite exposed on a flybridge. And it's very it's cold. You know, on a day like this, you're going along at, at 25, 30 knots. It's still cold. You have to put the hat on to keep the hair under. We probably have a jumper on even now. You know, yeah. we can take off in here in shorts and t-shirt and you don't have to sort of dress up yeah. for the elements. It's much, right. much quicker if you're using it a lot as well. Um, it was much quicker putting this away than it is packing a flybridge away. Yeah, must admit. Mm. I, I still quite like the flybridge. I'd certainly you, you entertain one, one again. Like, yeah, I like the visibility on the flybridge. I must yeah. admit, it's nice if you're doing long passages. Uh, I quite like it up there. Yeah, it brings out the sailor in me being, you know, togged up on <laughs> gas against the elements. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't mind it as much. But I, I get, you know, from a family point of view, it's it's, it's probably not, not quite as usable. Yeah. 
it's a real dilemma, and mm. and I actually, I mean, I have no chance at all at the minute of, of buying a bigger boat. Who can say, get, what's Mother's Blues 3 going to be? And the honest answer is, A, I can't afford it, and B, uh, I don't know, because I yeah. vacillate all the time. We went out, Marianne and I had a brilliant trip with uh, a chap called John Brennan up in Ireland on his boat, which was um, more of a semi-displacement sort of closed boat. And mm. so there's no, it, you were driving it inside, and for him, he's out of, out of Ireland and out across into the Atlantic and stuff, it's perfect. He doesn't want a sort of a, a, a sunset style of boat. And I've always said, I would never have a boat like that, I don't like being inside. And we both sat on that boat going out, we took us out to Skellig Michael, we both sat, this is fantastic, Lovely. we should have a boat like this. <laughs> and every time I go on a different boat, I think, no, actually, yeah, this is what I want. You know, and mm. I come on here today and think, yeah, no, this is what I want, but <laughs> yeah. I know I'll go on something else tomorrow and that'll be I what want I want. Now. And what I will actually buy, I don't know, but you're absolutely yeah. right. The comp they're all a compromise. And um, I really like sports cruisers. I like being more connected with the water. I like the fact you're a bit lower. You feel like you're going faster. It's a bit like doing 70 mile an hour on a Range mm. Rover compared to a, a Porsche, you know, because you lower down, you feel quicker. Um, but I like the inside home position of a Flybridge boat. Um, and also I really like open boats, so I can completely open boat, but you mm. get a boat of this size with all canopies and you spend your whole life putting canopies up and down. Yeah. So you can't win. Exactly. There is no boat no, that does right. everything. You, you always you, need a fleet of them. You've got to tick, tick, try and tick all the boxes and then compare how many ticks you've got to try and work out the boat, haven't you? In terms of what, what, what you, you want like to do. do yeah. exactly. What the family situation is, and exactly. there's many different things yeah. that impact. There's no right or choice. wrong answer, is yeah. there? No. I think, you know, try, try a few different ones and you'll find out quite quickly what works and what doesn't work. Yeah. Certainly that's, that's been our experience. Yeah. And you know, if we want to the real sort of open boat experience, then you put the Williams in the water and uh, go, go and scare yourself for a few uh, few hours. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. Well, that's that's fantastic. And may I ask, because people are always really curious, what do you do for a living? How do you fund it? So I, uh, I'm uh, an account manager for uh, British American Tobacco. Okay. And been with them for 26 years now, doing right. different, different roles in the UK and worked in the Channel Islands for them for a little while. Yeah. Um, and so I head up product management and business development at Raymarine. 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 I've heard of them. Have you? <laughs> <laughs> Is so, that why your boat's full of sim gear? <laughs> yeah. That's why it's full of all the latest and greatest Raymarine Absolutely. gear. Absolutely. Yeah. Might be a slight like, influence there, yeah. isn't there on the uh, choice of equipment. Yeah. So I, I mean, I've been with them for 18 years and I, I can combine my love of boating with my job so you know yeah. being head of product management we get to trial all the new equipment and as you'll see when you go around the new radars the new mfds etc it's great you know it's a really it's great to be able to combine your work and your passion totally and actually it's really interesting to hear because quite often you have people who are involved and they might be really really hot on electronics and really really good at all that sort of stuff but if they've not been on a boat they won't know that actually putting that switch there isn't going to work for a boater so yeah. for mm. you um, to be actually using this stuff and then also being involved in the development of it. That's brilliant. It's yeah. fabulous. So though Phil does... We give them loads you of... You like to give them a lot useful, of feedback. Useful feedback. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's useful, but yeah. it's uh, probably not useful to them. Probably not so useful, no. <laughs> so, no, it is, it's good because obviously support and you know, advice is, is close at hand as well. So yeah. it is, it's quite interesting, you know, working with some of the guys, the support guys at Raymarine who've been on board and helped set up things and suggested things. It's, it's really useful. It's great because you can see the difference. So we've just put the new Cyclone Pro radar on yeah. and you know, not many people probably value the radar so much and don't really understand maybe how it works or the, the quality of it and even you notice from our previous yeah. uh, Magnum up to this one the difference in quality in it and you know even with the, the new charts that have come out you know I've got Phil to try out some of the new Lighthouse charts so that he can compare them and to give us feedback on them so it's really good. That's fantastic, mm. well, that's really great, yeah well, really, no, it's, it, it, clearly the boat is a passion Yep. Oh yes, <laughs> and, uh, it, it has to be Nick. To be yeah. fair, I mean the yeah. amount of money it costs to run it. I know. We've always said if if it wasn't our main interest, our main hobby, and um, we weren't using it, it would have to go because we, we couldn't we couldn't justify no, the cost. We use it um, pretty much in the summer every weekend. Kids getting a little bit older, so they do have a little more outside other, other activities hobbies. and sporting things, which we're having to compromise a little bit on. Yeah. We always do our main holiday, two week holiday on here every year, yeah. and we are lucky. We live two minutes up the road so oh, really? we can come down and use it a lot if the traffic lights are in our favor it's a four minute 30 walk <laughs> really <laughs> from our house to yeah. boat wow so yeah oh, i mean that's that brilliant that makes yeah. it easy to come and you know keep an eye on it from a maintenance point of view but yeah. equally in the winter if we get a nice day in the winter we'll pop across to the isle of Wight and go and have lunch or something just to give the boat a run keep it keep it keep it up together and you know, get the use out of it that's it's, really interesting quite, actually quite a good position yeah. to be in yeah well that's exactly what we're doing as you know we moved our 
Carbo mm. this year. Uh, and the whole point is so that we can just carry on using it through the winter because there are nice days in the winter. You do. Yeah. And, uh, and you're very sheltered up here because you're right up a river in Sonic Marina at the moment. So it's been nice and sheltered. And that's what we've done. We've put it up a river. So we don't have to worry about it being thrashed about by the sea mm. when it's stormy in the winter. So uh, it's interesting to hear and hopefully we'll, we'll get to do a similar sort of thing. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Brilliant. Well, that has been absolutely fascinating. I genuinely love the boat. I think it's fabulous. Yeah, and I'm really, really pleased to hear how much you're enjoying it. And it's great to meet somebody who's so passionate about it. So thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Nick. So there we go. Let us know what you think of that one. You can probably tell I'm a little bit in love with that. And... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> And we will look forward to catching you on another one of these real soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Now, there was one thing I forgot to do, which was... This is for you. This is the, a carabar. A what, sorry? A carabar. You pop that on your table and your wine glasses go into here. Oh, wow. And then when the boat rots... Oh, that's very cool. That is perfect. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. And there should be some glasses and there should be a thing that goes in here. And I forgot those. <laughs> They're in the car. I'll go and get them and I'll bring them down. So you will get those eventually. Oh, but it's a limited edition alcoholic one. Very you can't good. buy them. You can buy the yeah, carabars, but you can't cool. buy an alcoholic. Oh, thank so you they're very just, much. They're just for meet the owner people. Oh, that's that's perfect. perfect. Thank you. It's a pleasure. No problem at all. Good. And on that bombshell, <laughs> I'll leave you to it. Super. Okay. Lovely. All right. Thanks See you later. Okay. Bye. Bye.